Also will address the opening session of the 7th South African AIDS Conference being held from today at the Nkosi Albert Atuli International Convention Center in Durban. Held every two years, the conference has become an established barometer of the advances made in confronting and controlling HIV infections in South Africa and in the regional states. This year's theme is Reflection, Refocus and Renewal. To tell us a little bit more about uh, the South Africa 7th AIDS Conference, we're now joined from our Durban studio by the conference's chairperson and advisor to Deputy President Sol Ramaphosa, Dr. Nono Simelela. Doctor, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning to the listeners. Doctor, South Africans and perhaps the world at large uh, can be said to have a little bit of AIDS fatigue, I suppose. Many people saying members of the media, civil society groups are no longer as vocal about it. We're no longer seeing HIV AIDS uh, headlines in the, in the newspapers and the like. But it is quite critical that we continue to revisit this, is it not? It is extremely important, especially given the fact that the latest survey shows us that Although we're doing well on enrolling people on treatment in South Africa, we still have very high levels of new HIV infections, especially amongst young women and girls. So it's important for South Africa and the region to remember that the fight is not yet over. We're not there yet, and we have to redouble our efforts on prevention in particular. So what role does uh, the conference play in doing what you've just alluded to? The conference is an important time to bring what we've traditionally called the HIV community, that is researchers, scientists, clinicians, the community, healthcare providers, and everyone who has been working in this field to come and look at where we are as a country, what are the successes, what have been the missed opportunities, what new lessons are emerging as people continue to work on finding solutions? And more importantly, what is it that we're going to do differently in South Africa into the future? Because we've got a goal in our national development plan that says we're looking to have under 20s in 2030 who are HIV free. Now that's a tall order. It means we need to start now to ensure that every baby who is born to any woman who is HIV positive is born HIV free and remains so until they are old. Now there are a lot of conspiracy theories out there when it comes to vaccines for HIV and AIDS uh, prevention and also possibly cures. Uh, some schools of thought may suggest that a vaccine and a cure is there already but um, pharmaceutical companies are withholding this because of financial gains, you name it, they're all out there. So let's get the facts from you today. What strides have been made and what advances are there in A, getting a vaccine and B, finding a cure? Well, the search for a cure continues. I think that the issues of conspiracies, you know, they've always dogged the field of HIV. People are hard at work. A lot of our scientists here in South Africa are trailblazers in this area. We've had a bit of success and then we have disappointments. We're dealing with a virus that is extremely, extremely difficult. It mutates, it changes. So it's not always easy to stay ahead of the curve. But it is very, very exciting and heartening to know that the scientists in this country are working hard on a vaccine. Um, we're looking not for a vaccine that will completely uh, cure HIV or at least control it. Even if there is 40%, 60% efficacy, it will help us. We need everything we possibly can get to make sure that the rates of new infections are stemmed. And there are various things, as you've said, there are microbicides, there are scientists who are working on gels that are taking the drugs, that is the pills that people take, they are mixing them with gels that women can apply in their vagina to ensure that they can be protected, trying all the time. So we must not be complacent. I don't think we have to be pessimistic. A cure will arrive one day, but even if it takes us long, we've got enough in our arsenal now to at least deal with the new infections. Mm. And I must say that one of the biggest things we have on our side is behavior change. If people can always bear in mind that it doesn't matter who you have sex with, where you have sex, 
always practice safer sex and condoms are available free of charge in this country and we must always promote safer sex. Taking a look at those uh, behavioral patterns that you've just spoken about now, uh, some of the myths or perhaps misconceptions, misinformation that people have for those who are already infected is that they're not aware that if you're positive and your partner's positive, you may have different strands of the virus and cross-infect each other with that. There are also some, um, some myths about how having sex with a virgin can cure you and the like. How far have we come as a country in correcting such uh, misinformation, do you think? I think we've come far. I think it's been a while since you've heard in the media a report about, um, you know, curing um, HIV through having sex with a virgin. I think we still have very high levels of violence against women and children. That's worrying because it is also associated with higher risk of HIV infection because of the trauma. So let's deal with the myth. The myth, it's, it's, we've dealt with that but we still have high rates of violence. We also have to be very aware of the emerging issues around um, the lesbian, gay, and transgender community, where you've had issues of what is called corrective rape. South Africans need to realize that that is an injustice, that we have to fight against such things, and that we have to raise the level of awareness that it's about responsibility, it's about respect, it's about accepting diversity, and it's about living and loving in the context of this epidemic. And all it takes is being aware of your responsibility, and as I say, it doesn't matter how and who you have sex with, always practice safer sex. Mm. Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa will address the opening session this afternoon. What will be his focus in that address? I think um, it, Deputy President will take us into a space that allows us to introspect. I think it will be very interesting to listen to the message that he's, he's going to deliver because it is a message that is going to take the responsibility for ensuring that we achieve what we have said in the National Development Plan, into the hands of South Africans. The beauty about all this, tragic as it has been for us as a country, is that we are making strides. But there is a level of responsibility in how we behave, in how we interact, and in how we support everyone who is currently taking medication, and in how we support one another when we are uh, faced with exposure to TB, which is also a problem that we want to highlight in this conference, and to continue to, to look out for young women and girls. So the Deputy President will speak to a whole of those issues. He'll also refocus us on the National Development Plan. He'll call on all of us to work in the way that we have done, the social compact, a multi-sectoral response, and each and every South African taking responsibility for making sure that this country indeed defeats AIDS as we know it. Doc, we thank you so much for your time and for availing yourself this morning. That was Dr. Nono Simelela, chairperson of the 7th SA AIDS conference being held from today until Friday in Durban, KZN. We take